Hello, I'm Celia. If you have been here before, welcome back. If you're new, welcome. In today's video, I'm not a DIYer, but I attempt some DIYs. I definitely made some mistakes and I definitely share some tutorials that I use to help me in this video. But these DIYs turned out so well. I'm so pleased. And these are easy things that you can attempt to. So let's just jump right in. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're interested in home decor, my fiance and I <laughs> doing things to our rental and occasional uh, cameos from cash. But let's get into those DIYs. Okay, for this lamp project, I'm going to use these construction tubes as a base for my, I thought it was my phone. <laughs> for my inexpensive, this lamp was $11.66 from the Goodwill. I'm gonna use it as a base to hold up the pole wrap to make this a much nicer looking lamp. Clap, clap, clap your hands. Okay, so to get started with this DIY, I first need to adhere my concrete tube to the base of the lamp because I plan to leave the base as is. So I'm going to measure how much I need to cut so that I can cover the full length of the lamp. Now, I knew when I started this that I was gonna wish that I had power tools and I was exactly right. The sawing, I mean, it didn't take forever, but it definitely could have been faster. And now this adhesive, I thought I was doing the right thing, picking up, you know what I mean? Real construction adhesive, it was a fail. So hard to get out. You see, I tried on the base, then I said, okay, well let's try the actual tube because it's a smaller surface area. All of it was a no. Uh, I took it off and luckily with a wet paper towel, I was able to get it all off. Bless water for everything. <laughs> and in the end, I just went with E6000. I know E6000, I love E6000, it works. You know, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. So I got that base, the cut part on to the base of my lamp and then again with my trusty E6000 I'm going to get my second tube on and I'm going to secure it with some paper lord I'm going to secure it with some painter's tape so that we can get on to the pole wrap okay I worked really hard <laughs> to get this this far this lamp this far but then as I was looking at it, I was like, oh no, it's going to be too tall. This is a 13 inch, like this is a 13 inch lampshade, which is a pretty sizable lampshade. So, and it looks ridiculous sitting on top of this huge honking lamp. So I think I'm going to take my tube off. <laughs> even though I worked very hard to get it on take my tube off see where the brakes are in the lamp itself and then I might have to YouTube University on how to rewire a lamp just a little bit because I actually want this to live in my home and it can't live here looking like this so we're jumping back in Okay, well that came off <laughs> pretty easily. Now there is a split. It's gonna be really hard for you guys to see right there. Like this, there, this section above this point, I think I'm gonna try to remove. And then let that be, let this be the top of the lamp. Then we'll have, um, you know, like a 10 inch harp and I can have that 13 inch um, 
lampshade and this more like this will be the top of the very top of the lamp including the lampshade i watched a video and i got it so okay i'm gonna screw i'm gonna link the video that i use down below um the lady's name is jane i've watched her videos before she's actually really helpful Uh, now granted Jane was doing something a little bit different she was handling a different kind of lamp might have spoke too soon gotta watch her show me how to tie this knot and then put this all back on put this all back on oh Sean can't see what I'm doing but he should be very impressed Ooh, look at that y'all <laughs> she did it handiest I am the handiest person What she called this knot. And that is how you make an underwriter's knot. Underwriter's knot. Okay. Boom. Now I put she, on hers they were different, but I don't think that there's a way for me to test this other than to just put them back on and then just plug in the lamp and see it, make sure it works. So here is my lamp i didn't say this my lamp is broken this is where the switch should be i wonder if i can just buy a little thing and twist it on there i as a workaround was just going to get a smart plug and plug it in that way it's just always on and with the help of the smart plug i can turn it off and now after I did all of that sawing on those tubes and struggling with that glue only to shorten this lamp and only need one concrete tube, jeez Louise. Okay, coming back to my floor lamp, I got this giant pole wrap. Pole wrap has been everywhere and I really wanted to try it on a product. I really wanted to try it on a project um, I have a feeling this is going to be when I wish we had power tools, but I'm going to measure this for my table lamp and I'm using that tube was basically being used as a base. So we're going to measure how much we need, cut it and make this lamp come alive. Y'all already know what I'm about to say. I wish I had a power tool. <laughs> I definitely was just applying too much pressure. So my arm started hurting. So I called Sean in to finish. Um, but I did the second one all on my own. And now I needed two packages of pole wrap to cover the full diameter of my concrete tube. And cutting to size was really easy because the pole wrap is really just backed by paper. So I was able to do this with a box cutter, no problem. Sean said, you should put something under that because you're gonna cut through. I said, no, I'm not. And then <laughs> I cut right through, of course. Now, some of my pole wrap will not be backed by the concrete tube. So I'm just marking that off so I make sure that I don't put glue up there because it isn't necessary. Now here I am with this, my nemesis of this project, this glue. 
I figured I bought it, I should use it. And it, it, you see I'm using two hands. I've caulked many a baseboard in this apartment, so I'm no stranger to this caulk gun, but this glue was really hard. So if I did this again, I would probably just go in with the E6000. But the glue did work just fine. Um, yeah, it did its job, it glued. So a couple of things I learned while doing this. So pole wrap isn't exactly straight. So when I go to put on the second piece to close it up, there is a gap at the bottom, but then it's overlapping at the top. Ends up not being a big deal when we get to the staining, but here I just wanted to close that up as much as possible. So I put on some more E6000 glue and we used some painter's tape to hold it together while we let the glue, you know, dry and cure. And then for the stain, because although I do like this color, I wanted it to go a little bit darker. This is a red, red oak pole wrap, I believe. I used Verithane American Walnut Stain, water-based stain, and I initially started with the rag, but honestly, the way the rag was covering the paper of the pole wrap, I had to switch to a brush just to make sure I got in all those nicks and crannies. But I think once I put the stain on, this like turned this into like a DIY, from, from like a like, oh, here's a little DIY thing, and I did to like, ooh, this is cute. So I'm really, really happy with the way this turned out. And using the base of the lamp was perfect because you're not going to see it. And covering the concrete tube with the stain totally hid the fact that it didn't come together. I just want to note that in this reveal shot, this is not the final lampshade. I ordered one. It just didn't arrive in time for this video. Um, so if you want to see the final, final, please be sure to check my Instagram. Okay, after finding a lamp at the Goodwill that ended up only costing me $4, I decided to add another DIY to this video. I'm at Joann's to pick out some fabric, it's backwards. Um, but while I do that, I wanted to tell you guys about this service that I discovered that I think you're actually really gonna love because I did. It's a super easy and simple way to get all of those photos off of your phone and into your hand. It's called Free Prints and they happen to be today's video sponsor. I truly was blown away at how easy it was to use this app. Free Prints is an app for both iPhone and Android, and it really is as simple as opening the app, selecting some photos, selecting the size of your photos, entering a shipping address, and adding a payment method, and your photos are on your way to you. As a mom to a new little one, you know I have a bajillion photos of him, and of course I would love to have some of them in my hand instead of just on my phone. I have a baby book that I have been trying to complete for more than a year. So this definitely came right on time. So Free Prints wants to offer first time users free 15 four by six prints. They will even cover the shipping. You don't even have to enter any payment information. Seriously, if you just click the link down in the description and use code Celia15, you'll get 15 free four by six prints for free. How many times do I have to say free? It's free. No subscriptions, no commitments, just come in, get your prints, pay for shipping, and finally get some of those photos off of your phone. So be sure to check down in the description for a link and use code Celia15 to get your first 15 free 4x6 prints for free, <laughs> and then go back and use this service again and again because it really is fantastic. <laughs> Okay, moving on. I recently found this lamp here at the Goodwill. It was $8.33, but I had a coupon, <laughs> so it ended up only being $4. That came with the lampshade, and the lampshade isn't terrible. Um, it's actually a pretty nice lampshade uh, in terms of quality now that I've been looking at lampshades. However, it is old, it's dirty, it has some dings and dents in it. So I figure it's a perfect opportunity to try another DIY, and that is a pleated, fab a fabric pleated lampshade. So I went to Joann's, I got this fabric, 
It's a, a guinea fowl, like African print, but I just love the colors. It was very fall, the olive green, the maroon. I watched the video and I'm gonna follow the steps. I will be sure to link the video that I watched for this tutorial down below. I'm just gonna follow the steps that the young lady in that video did and hopefully this turns out. It's kind of a last minute. I'm trying to rush and throw it in. Let's do it. Now this is a no sew fabric project so don't go feeling like you can't do this because you can. <laughs> So I bought two yards of this fabric, so I just split it in half. I'm using the long end to make sure that I have enough room to make enough pleats. And now uh, to prep your fabric, you definitely want to steam it um, and cut it down to size, which is what I'm doing here. My lampshade was 13 inches, so I'm gonna cut um, some off, some fabric off until I have 15 inches because I need a one inch seam allowance, if you will. I'm saying that in quotation marks, there are no seams. Um, I haven't had a ironing board in years and this project kind of says, Celia, you need an ironing board because I was kind of into the fabric projects. So once I have my fabric trimmed and prepped, I'm going to flip up the edges and create that one inch seam allowance, as I said. Now I used a um, iron-on hem tape, which is super easy to use, but I only had a little bit left over from a previous project. If I were to do this again, I would definitely go purchase more hem tape. So I used that on just the ends uh, of the fabric, but it definitely stiffened things up and made it easier to uh, get a, a, a stiff pleat. So I would do that. So after I hem up my ends, I'm then going to spray the fabric down with fabric stiffener. This is where the magic happens because when your fabric is wet and you fold up your pleats as it dries, it will stiffen and stay in those pleats. Another thing I would do if I were doing this again is I would use some type of something to create even pleats. Um, one thing that I noticed at the end is that my pleats weren't exactly even. So I would use like a ruler or a knife or something to help create more even prints. But you just moisten your fabric with the fabric stiffener, fold your accordion folds and you're ready to go. Okay. my. Fabric is dry now and it's holding its shape pretty well. The video I watched, the girl used a much heavier fabric, so I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage. <laughs> but uh, now it's time to glue it onto our lampshade. I think it's gonna look really great. I've touched it several times, but now the trick is going to be getting it even. I'm gonna start here at the seam of my lampshade. I'm just gonna use that as a starting place because it's already there. And I'm just using a hot glue gun. Now, the way the girl in the video did hers was she started with gluing on her first. I first started by gluing my ends together and glued that on the seam. And then I counted how many pleats I had total, then took you know the middle point of that and glued that on kind of you know across from my first glue down pleat. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think you get it. And then from there, I'm just counting how many pleats I have in the middle and finding the center pleat and gluing it down. Now, if you're paying attention to this, you see that my fabric is upside down. <laughs> and I did not notice that until I had already glued several pleats. So in a second here, you'll see me realize, oh no, you have to take this off and start all again, which really wasn't that bad, but word of caution when dealing with fabric, make sure you're using it the right way, the right way up. Yeah, here she is. Disappointment and shame, heavy sigh in your spirit. Now, once I corrected myself, again, I just went in, like I said, starting with the seam and then using middle points just over and over again to try and get the pleats as even as possible. 
if I were to do this again, in addition to using the seam tape all the way around, I would leave just a bit more fabric for allowance on the lampshade. So although my lampshade was 13 inches, I probably should have given myself 14 inches worth of fabric to work with instead of exactly 13, just to make sure that I'm covering the exist existing lampshade completely. Otherwise, this was super easy and I really truly love the way it turned out. I got this lamp at the Goodwill and I really wanted to do that like it seems like the we've moved on from doing this DIY but I still <laughs> want to do it it's the one where we make it look aged and old I've seen it done a number of different ways but when I saw it done with concrete it just looked so much better than when it was done with um, It looked so much better than when it was done with baking soda, baking powder. So I have some concrete left over from the last time we did some DIYs. So I figured I would give it a shot. Let's see what it looks like. My intention is for this lamp to eventually go in our kitchen when we eventually get there. Um, so I'm gonna use this green color because I plan to use some green in the kitchen. This was just from the thrift store. Before we even get into this, really, I just wanna say I did zero measuring. <laughs> I'm really just um, throwing some concrete powder in here. This is Quickrete with my paint and seeing how it looks. In the end, with the green, I came to a happy medium, I think. Um, I wanted it to have you know, some real texture, so I did try to go a little heavy on the concrete, but honestly, it's just concrete and paint together and go easy if that you know what I mean? Like, start small, add more concrete to see how your texture is going. But this DIY is so, I mean, when I was done and this lamp was dry, it looked so good. I really could have stopped right there with one, with a different paint color for me. Like, if it had just been the paint and the concrete, it was perfection in making it look like pottery. So I did end up adding a bit more concrete. Again, like I said, it was a trial and error and initially it was just a little too paint heavy and not enough texture heavy. So again, with this one, I really came to a happy place. I like love this lamp now, it's my favorite. So while I was here, I also found this pot at the thrift store. It was about $10, I think, and it's really good price for this large pot. And I wanted to try the same technique, but this time I wanted to go even heavier with the concrete to see if I could, because I also had some texture here to cover up with this flower motif, to see if I could, you know, push the envelope. And now here, I went too far. Um, I was really trying, I didn't show myself mixing up the paint and the concrete, but I went really heavy on the concrete and pretty light on the paint, and that was a mistake. It gunked up my brush, um, it became really flaky on the pot. In the end, it was fine, but the pot really needed um, multiple layers to cover up that design, but I just, the paint was like drying and it was stiff and my paintbrush was stiff. So I would say if you're going to attempt this with some concrete, start slow. Start with a little bit of powder and slowly build up. Don't do what I did and go ham. <laughs> In the end, the pot came out okay, but I learned some lessons here, which is what DIYing is all about, really. Learning lessons. Thank you. 
And now here is my dried lamp. Look at it. It's so great. I was so pleased with the way this looked. And I was a little nervous that I was gonna mess it up, but I, I forged I forged ahead. The texture came out really great. There were very few cracks. So I'm using the same stain that I used on our floor lamp earlier, the Verathane American Walnut. And I saw someone else do this and I had never done anything like this before. So I thought, okay, I'll start at the back and kind of dab, dab, dab. And and I was a little unsure, not gonna lie. <laughs> but once you start, you can't undo it. So I said, well, you just gotta keep going. And I think what really worked was I would deposit most of the stain towards the bottom of the base of the vase so that, you know, I'm kind of going for an ombre aged look where the bottom, you know, has been sitting in dirt or whatever. And it's where most of the brown and agedness is deposited. And then from there, I'm just dabbing the residue kind of over the rest of the body of the vase and because the texture is pretty intense it just allowed the stain to kind of deposit very unevenly I'm just really so pleased <laughs> with how this one came out I was very unsure but in the end I think ah, I can't pick a favorite project I love them all um, but yeah, I kept most of the stain heavier at the bottom and then tried my best to ombre up and I really, really, really am pleased on how this came out. If you are nervous and want to give this a try, I think you really should because I am not a DIYer and I really feel good about how this lamp turned out, okay? Can you tell? I'm patting myself on the back. Thank you guys so much for watching. What did you think? Do you think you'll attempt any of them? I think you should. The one with the concrete really and truly was my absolute favorite. It's the easiest way to get that like pottery texture. So yeah, let me know down in the comments what you thought. Please be sure to follow me on Instagram, hit that subscribe button and stay with us on this channel. And as always, thank you for watching. Bye.